You showing off to your sister? <laughs> Easy, mate. I can't use a cast in this leg for the simple fact that even if it's on for four weeks, six weeks, his leg will probably go <laughs> a full centimetre in that time. If there's a cast over that bone, the bone won't grow. So he'll have one leg shorter than the other. What we need to do is give him some sort of splint that is strong enough to stop that bone from moving, but still flexible enough that the bone can grow within it. I'm amazed at how good he's been. He's been incredible. This is advice I know you won't listen to, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Just go easy. Take life slowly. Let's not panic. Let's just enjoy our youth in the slow lane, just for a few weeks. Is that OK? <laughs> It'll make a big difference. Hmm? What we really need from him is essentially the impossible for him to stay quiet. Yeah. This bandage will mean that he really stays off the leg a lot, but he's still going to try to push his limits because that's what devils do. Yeah. Four weeks maybe, because he's so young, yeah. could be enough. They've just got to stay off it. Yeah. For most pets that I see in here, if their leg isn't 100%, it doesn't really matter. They can get around, even if they have a slight limp. For a Tassie devil like Lewis, his leg needs to be 100% because in the future, he's going to go and essentially live in the wild. He has to survive there, but also he has to breed there. On three legs, he just can't do that. In Cairns, Chris and his tiny patient, Fatty, have arrived at the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital. You can see it. It's a pretty decent lump. It really jumps off the top of his head there. It's almost got two parts too, that bigger part over to one side, and then just towards the front, there's another smaller little, little lump there. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to get out. Yeah. He just doesn't have a lot of skin to play with on that forehead of his. That's what worries me. The goldfish is about to undergo a risky operation to remove a tumour from his head. Dr Doug English will be assisting Chris with the delicate procedure. The lump's got to come off. Hopefully the fish will be tough enough to withstand that surgery, but otherwise he's going to die. That's a big lump, and if it's growing rapidly, it's some sort of a cancer for sure. Adding to the pressure, this is the first operation Chris has ever performed on a fish. The fatty has to be incredibly tough to get through this because this is way out of his comfort zone. It's just a massive, massive ask for him to get through this. At SASH, Lisa suspects four-week-old Ariel may have suffered brain damage after falling from a scratching post. She's just out here. After hours of waiting, distressed sisters Melissa and Vanessa are finally able to see their fragile kitten. You can give her a cuddle, it's okay. Melissa's only had little Ariel and her brother for three days. They got them as rescue kittens and they've fallen in love with them only after such a short time. And for something like this to happen, it's really distressing for them. They don't even know if Ariel's going to make it and they've still got the little brother at home who's pining for his big sister. It's a lot to take in. Thank you. That's all right. We'll look after her and um, we'll call you if we have any issues. OK, so just got to try and think positive, but you know, there's obviously no guarantees. OK. She's still got signs of head trauma. There's no way of knowing whether she'll ever recover from this. Jeanette is worried about her Norwich Terrier, Bindi, who's having problems with her first litter of pups. Oh, here it goes. Even though she's five and a half, and I guess uh, in the dog world, a mature mother, it's to be expected that she's just not, not too sure about the whole thing. Yeah. Did you get a bite there? I did. You OK? Yeah, it's my nice bite. <laughs> this breed is notorious for difficult births because of their small pelvis. So I do actually have a puppy coming through now. You see it? Yeah. Oh! Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Good girl. Good girl. Push. Head's through, but we've got to wait for that. Mm, big. The shoulders to come through, and this is where we're stuck at the moment. Come on, Vinny. Good. I'm just trying to get my fingers up around its shoulders. It's 1am and Bindi is still trying to push out her first puppy. Give me a push, girl. Come on, Bindi. Come on, Bindi, give me one really good push. Push. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Got her? Yeah. 
just have to get air into these lungs. The puppy's out, but he's not breathing. This is critical. Let me start sucking in air. Is he all right? I'm getting movement, but just not a lot of breathing. Hey, puppy. Hey, come on. Can you stand up for us? Harmon is now feeling the full effects of the tick paralysis. The penguin can no longer stand up. Harmon is getting much worse, so that's really made the final decision for me. You gonna move? I just don't think he's gonna survive without having that anti-serum. So I'm just gonna have to take the risk there could be a potentially fatal allergic reaction. All right, fingers crossed. That's all you've got. Harmon will now be monitored constantly to make sure he has no adverse reaction to the serum. So not had any other lamenesses? No. Good boy, you're all right. Hey, no. no. As soon as you get to that elbow and put a little bit of pressure on the inside part of it, he's, he's not happy, he's pulling away and having a bit of a gnaw at my hand. So he certainly saw on that point. Good boy, yeah, I know, don't you? Did, did your mother teach you to do that? Yeah. You're allowed to bite the vet. No. Especially Andrew. That's right. He's not sure up in his shoulder or down in his wrist, but that elbow seems to be the problem. I guess, dog of his breed and age, I think we have to think of something like um, elbow dysplasia, um, which I guess you're a little familiar with. Too little. familiar with. I don't want a dog um, with elbow dysplasia. <laughs> For Angel, this diagnosis brings back a lot of painful memories. I would really hope that it's not elbow dysplasia. I suppose that's the worst scenario. My last one had lots of dysplasia and he had a lot of health issues. Elbow dysplasia is a disease where the, the elbow joint doesn't quite fit together properly and puts pressure in the wrong spot and as a result of that we tend to get fragments of bone coming off, or even little fractions if you like. That's the last thing we want to let Ollie get to. I think really the next step is we need to do a CT yeah. scan. Okay. It's quite sensitive at detecting whether he's got a little bone chip or there's a big flap of bone. Yeah. I guess the other thing is, unfortunately, if he does have this problem, he's never going to be normal. I just hope that whatever it is, they can fix it very quickly and he can get on with his, his puppy life. It's so awful for him to be so young and have to go through this. So, yeah, it's, it's very upsetting. Chris and Neil are volunteering their time to a community clinic called Pets in the Park. What's that, Cookie? What's that? I've been doing this for about three or four months now, and it's one of the highlights of my month. <laughs> and just to see these people's faces, oh, it's an amazing feeling when you get home. You're walking home on, on cloud nine. Dr Mark Westman started the free monthly clinic to help those struggling financially to care for their pets. A pet in the Park is really designed to look after Sydney's homeless and severely disadvantaged. Some of our clients will feed their animals before they feed themselves and so we want to tie in and do what we can to help out their animals and hopefully also help out the owners at the same time. This is Rodney, hey, Rodney and Di. Hey Di, how are you doing? Chris's first patient is six-month-old Isabella. Owner Rodney is worried about his little girl. Oh, we heard about the pets in the park and I thought it would be a good opportunity to come and just find out if she was pregnant. She's not to sex, so we're not sure. OK. I certainly know what you mean. She's a little bit rotund, a little bit pear-shaped. So we need to work out why that is. Yeah. I think I can feel little fluid-filled sacs in there, which would more than likely say that she is pregnant. I'd say she's about a month or so in, maybe. So it sounds about right. It's been about four weeks that she's been like this. It may be too late for the pregnant Isabella, but these clinics do provide free desexing to try and control the numbers of unwanted kittens. We'll look to vaccinate her and worm her, but also maybe do a bit of a nail trim as well. Yeah, OK. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah you, you probably benefit from that too. She could have used these to fend off the boys. Good on you guys, all right, thanks for that. See you. 
annual vaccinations, flea treatments, routine nail trims and basic medical care for an animal cost hundreds of dollars. Good job. Get it. But today, all of these services are being performed free. Well, you get so much out of having a pet, don't you? Yeah. In a lot of ways, they become like your children, yeah. don't they? You know that phrase, unconditional love, it gets thrown around a lot, but when you come here today, you see its true meaning, because here, these pets, they don't ask for much, but what they get in return is so much love. For these people, these pets may be their only companion. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.